Hi, my name is Manav Misra, and in this video series, we're going to set up a professional grade local web development environment for both Mac and Windows. If you're on Linux, you can just follow the Mac tutorials, and that'll pretty much get you where you need to be. So, what do I mean by professional grade? Well, the tools that I have listed here are used by pretty much every single developer across the globe on pretty much an everyday basis, whether that's solo developers, small teams, large teams, you name it. That just doesn't mean that this is all they use, and maybe they use something similar to some of these, but they do use these tools to some extent on basically every project, and that's why we as aspiring developers want to make sure we get the hang of all of the basics of all of these tools that you see listed here. Uh, by the way, by local, I just mean we're uh, setting these tools up on the primary computer on which you're going to be doing your web development work. Um, once again, there are some variations in what you're going to see in these videos. Uh, so once you get the hang of things, you can definitely come back around and edit and, and update these as you see fit for your own uh, personal preference or workflow. I'm going to share with you some uh, starting settings and extensions that we're going to use and configurations for all of these. And the whole idea is that if you're learning how to be a web developer, I want you to focus more on actually writing code and less on these other distractions that don't really matter for right now. I want you in your editor, uh, writing the code, running it, building your apps, and, and solving problems. And then later on, you can get into configuring and updating things more specifically. All right, so what are we actually going to be uh, setting up in the next few videos? We're going to need a text editor. We're going to use Visual Studio Code. That's not Visual Studio, the full-blown IDE, but Visual Studio Code. We're going to need a command line interface, aka a terminal. So what's an interface? Well, this is an interface. And this is an interface. Actually, this microphone I'm speaking into is also an interface for audio. So in our case, we want a command line interface. And that means, uh, or a terminal, that means a way to interface or interact or command the computer by using words instead of moving our mouse around and, um, and clicking on things all the time. And in the long run, that's going to allow us to work more productively and efficiently. So we're going to start that process. We're going to want a version control system. We're going to be using Git, that's G-I-T, Git, uh, and to go along with that, a GitHub account. Uh, so we need a version control system that's going to keep track of how our project changes over time and tracks all of our changes line by line. Not only that, but it's going to allow us to take snapshots of our project and attach deliberate commit messages to those snapshots that we can collaborate very easily we can roll a project back we can create branches so we can experiment with our code in a non-destructive way so on and so forth that's going to be really important and then we're going to want to use a dependency manager in our case we're going to use npm node package manager and if we're on the mac uh, or a Mac um, series, you're going to see something called Homebrew also. And those are, um, those are tools that are going to help us bring in other packages of, of code and other uh, utilities that we'll use to help us along the way. Uh, so to wrap things up here, I just want to show at least this one quote from William Schatz Jr. with Linux Command. Because a common question uh, when we start using the command line is uh, for newer developers is it, it kind of it's a little uncomfortable sometimes they're used to just clicking around with the mouse so it almost feels like ah why are we doing this well this sort of gives you an idea of why we'd want to do this this is what the terminal looks like um, in case you haven't interacted with the terminal in the past and again the long and short of it is as a professional developer you should have some familiarity with the command line and not be limited to just the point and click interface uh, and I've already mentioned this about Git. I think we've basically covered this uh, pretty well already. And then GitHub. So we're going to use Git, uh, a program inside of the terminal on our local machines. And when we're done working and we want to push our project up to, uh, to the cloud for backup and even for deployment so people can use our projects, we're going to um, use something called GitHub. And we can actually tie that later on into a service called Netlify. But that's later on in the course. Uh, and then I've already mentioned about VS Code. Once again, I'm going to get you started with some settings and configuration. Uh, and then later on, you can adjust those as you need to. 
So, oh, well, finally, of course, um, the power of pre-written packages. We're going to be using NPM, which is part of Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript that we can run on a server. Now, we're not going to be doing any of that, at least not, not for a while, depending on how far along you go into these courses. Um, but we'll be using a small part of that and just using its package manager. So we get to uh, bring in a few different tools that other developers have created for us. Um, that's going to help us, again, focus on learning fundamentals and focus on being productive with the business logic of our apps. And I want to make sure I'm yelling here, all caps, so that's not an endorsement to just start going in and pulling in this framework and that framework, um, because you do need to learn the fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript if you're going to be um, any type of a, a proficient web developer, especially the JavaScript. So... Again, we're going to be very deliberate about how we use these packages, and we're not going to use them as a substitute for fundamental knowledge by any means. All right, that's enough of this talk. In the next video, we're going to start the process. We're going to kick it off with the easier part, which is just setting up and installing VS Code. Hope to see you then. Thanks.